It's the Hoffman Show on the Team 980, always live as well on the free Odyssey app, streaming live too on YouTube, youtube.com slash at the Team 980. And if you're watching, you see the lovely, should be in the Hall of Fame face of Brian Mitchell with us from Cleveland, uh, where he is on the call. You'll see his face on your television later too, on the call with Chick Hernandez and Logan Paulson tonight uh b mitch I, I don't know how much uh color commentary you've done like this this new for you first time since when like what what you feeling man it's a couple just a little bit till kickoff first time since 2004 actually i did some games i did three Ooh. games in nfl europe uh and i think this would be a lot easier um because it's a lot of storylines uh and I'm, I'm around the team and i talk about this team every day but when i went to europe you know, half of that team was basically uh, names I'd never heard of, people I'd never heard of, and uh, but it was fun. You know, uh, got used to it. I was offered this opportunity, and uh, I love this football team, so I wanted to at least give it a try. Yeah, no, it should be really fun. Um, we've, you know, obviously I talked to Logan a bunch of times uh, throughout the week, um, and he did this last year, and, and Chick's such a pro. Uh, and you guys, yeah. you guys have been working together for a long time, so it should be a lot of fun to watch you guys tonight. When you open the broadcast tonight, and they're like, all right, Brian, uh, or Chick's like, all right, Brian, what's your number one thing? What are you going to tell him? Well, my number one thing would be basically no injuries. That's what everybody's number one thing should be. But ultimately, the big question is about the offensive line and Sam Howell. And uh, my whole thing, uh, when I give the keys to the game, protect the quarterback. And if this offensive line, this team is going anywhere, it's going to be because the offensive line came together, they jailed, and played well. You know, during training camp, they have been getting whipped by the uh, defensive line. But now you're going against another team, uh, fresh blood. You can cut them. <laughs> you can't cut your own guys in practice. So it gives you a chance to go out there and show what you're about. And uh, just looking at how this offense handles the uh, the, 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 the offense that Eric Bieniemy has installed. You know, I look at the defense. They played great last year. I expect them to take a step with some of the young corners that they drafted and things of that nature. But I think my biggest question is on the offensive side of the football. Let's see how quick they can get up to, uh, up to speed. Brian Mitchell, of course, with us here on the Hoffman Show, host of B. Mitch and Finley, middays over on 106.7 The Fan and on the broadcast tonight on NBC4. So um, you always hear in the preseason, and you know this as well as anyone, and, and you can probably speak to this too from your days with Andy back in Philly, mm -hmm. like you don't game plan. It's a vanilla offense. You don't want to give up away too much. But we also know that one of the ways they're going to protect Sam Howell is with the play calling. So, like, yeah. what do you expect? Like, how do those two ideas mesh tonight to not show too much but give Howell the best opportunity to be successful? Well, a lot of the uh, things in this offense, a lot of the base uh, plays are quick passes, you know, getting the ball into the hands of the running backs on a swing, on a, on a flat route, getting the ball quickly into the hands of your receivers, running the, you know, the jet sweeps and things of that nature. This is not uh, special plays for Andy Reid. <laughs> These are normal plays. So I think that's the thing about it. That also helps the offensive line out. You're getting the ball at your hand real quick. You know, they get to get their hands of the defensive players down, and that would help them out. But I think ultimately Andy's always still wanting to run the football. And I see Eric as a former running back. And with the running backs he has, wanting to run the ball still while doing some of those other things because – you look at some of the things they're doing from the running around in a circle, the ring around the rosy things, and all of those things, they like to have fun. Andy Reid was like that when I was with him in Philadelphia. I expect Andy to be the same, I mean, uh, Eric to be the same way. And I just hope some of these players, you know, the Terry McLaurins and on this team, the J uh, Jahan Dawson, those guys take some ownership and use some of their creativity and let him know because he will get it involved into the plays. Yeah, no, you, that was the cool thing about a uh, quarterback on Netflix. Like, you see how much Mahomes and Kelsey <laughs> yeah. specifically have an impact on everything. Um, speaking of, of things that I've been wanting to pick your brain about uh, from your days with Andy, and I think it folds nicely into this part of the conversation. He has been the best coach of the screen game for 30 years running in the NFL. Yeah. Why is he so good at it, and is that something that you think the enemy has brought with him? I think the thing about Andy, most of his screens are ran off of plays that they do ordinarily. You know, a lot of teams, when they get ready to run a screen, it's normally third and long or some situation where they know the guys are coming at them, so they try to catch them off guard, which means that that team is also looking for those things. Well, Andy will run a screen on first and ten. He'll run it on third and one, you know, at any opportune time, and he runs a lot of stuff off of play-action fakes and things of that nature. One thing I love about the system, and you see a lot of this in training camp, because you've been out there, where Eric has a lot of motion, mm -hmm. a lot of movement in that offense. And what happens when you have a lot of movement is everybody has to make the proper calls. 
one mistake and somebody could go the distance. Uh, I watched a play the other day where they threw a screen to uh, Hodges, and uh, AG was running a swing route and kept going, and Eric was so excited about him going up the sideline because that gets the linebacker to turn his back. That one linebacker runs out of the play, you got a lot of a big crease right there. So a Andy is so good because it comes at times you don't expect it, and it also comes off a, a plain play. It doesn't change everything. Like the most times I was on uh, with Norv, and when Norv had a screen game, it was a completely different look. Well, I'm sure they have a key. They see that look, oh, screen is coming. With Andy, you never know. Brian Mitchell with us here on the Hoffman Show. Um, how much do you think the story of the week, the Ron comments about Eric and, and all the hoopla that followed it, how much does that infiltrate into tonight? I don't think it infiltrates tonight at all. You know, I had a conversation with Eric, and he's like, man, I'm good. I'm past that, bro. I'm trying to get this team better. And I think that's the way you have to be. Listen, uh, we, we all know that uh, something comes up. And let's be Ron put his foot in his mouth as he stated. And you get past yeah. it, you know. Uh, but we in the media now, we like to discuss it and we want to talk about it. But I think they understand there's a lot at hand right now. And Eric, is he's, he's concerned about the football, not that. You know, that, that it, I don't know why it came up or who, who complained about what. But let's be real. It's training camp. <laughs> why should it be easy? It's supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to be the toughest thing you're going to do all year. And I think they've been doing that. And I was talking with Jack in a production meeting. He has enjoyed it because it also makes more competition for his defensive players, which in turn makes him better. Yeah, no, it's, it's funny as we talked through it this week, because I, I, from what I saw of what you had to say about it and what I said about it, like we definitely mm -hmm. came at it from different angles, but I think people would be surprised how much we agree about it. Like mm -hmm. it's training camp. It sucks. It's incredibly human to be like, damn, this sucks. And ultimately, like, I, I think what was cool is to see, you know, and, and I agree with you that Ron in part because he should have known that it would cause a firestorm. Like, but what he ultimately oh, described yeah. was like, hey, go to Eric and work it out. And th people did, and they worked it out. And like, that's good. Should he have known better? Yes. I think that's a, you know, that's a whole different topic. We don't need to get mm -hmm. back into it. But I, I do think what has certainly emerged is what you just said. Like, it doesn't seem to be a problem in the building. And like, I, I'd imagine yeah. you try to put your player hot at, or hat on at times this week and like, Think about what it would have been like if you were one of the ones who initially went to Ron and how that might have been mm -hmm. framed. Or, you know, if you didn't and you heard one of your teammates, like, does this stuff matter in a locker room at all? Or is it is it just like, oh, that's media noise on the outside and you're able to to kind of tune it out? I don't think it's media noise on the outside. And I think, you know, I've been in that same situation where other people went to the coach complaining. And I've always been a leader on the team. And I was the NFL player rep. Okay, NFL PA rep. And when I got to Philadelphia, I got to the executive committee level where I was a vice president. And I would go to Andy a lot of times if I saw something and say, Coach, I'm not calling the PA, but I'm just letting you know if they were to show up, what would happen? You know, they'll, they'll catch somebody because everything Andy Reid did, I felt that he was getting the best out of us. We were getting something from it and it was there for a reason. So I had no problem with it. Uh, so I never had, and, I, and when I found out whoever, whoever was complaining, I would go and talk to him, you know, because overall, let's be real, this team, after three years, they can't get complacent and be happy about anything. They need to be accepting or receptive to whatever comes to them. Uh, Eric comes from a, a, a team that went to three Super Bowls. They won two. Why wouldn't you want to listen to that, you know? Because I left here as a guy who had gone two days all the time in training camp. And it, training camp was like a month back then with Joe Gibbs. Norv Turner with the two hours and a half, two hours, 45 minute practices in gear full time. I go to Andy and we don't have any uh, gear on. Like training camp is easier for him now. With Andy, we go three days of, of two days and then the rest of the time we never go two days again. But we went pass in the morning, shells in the afternoon. Pass in the morning, special teams practice in the afternoon. Those things happen. But we ran as if we were in a track meet. And I went to him one day. I said, damn, coach, I didn't know it could be so difficult. I said, can we wear pads tomorrow? And he said, no, I'm getting you in shape. I want to make you have to move around so much. You watch him running down to the goal line, sprinting to like jogging back to the huddle, jogging in the huddle. All those things pays off. I used the example of this. Josh Norman would practice after practice an hour to an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. If I'm a head coach and I see that, I would think I didn't do enough. I didn't work him enough. 
Because if you got an hour and a half extra after practice, I'm not doing something I'm supposed to do. I look at my, my, my record from the previous years. We are below 500. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. I felt that Ron had just went to, look, the guys came to me and said, this is a little tough. Man, Coach, what's going on? Go talk to Eric. We figured it out. But this is what we've come together with, and this is what we're going to do. Case closed. I would have never talked about that. Well, he hadn't been a head coach because Ron played for yeah. two people that were head coaches. And guess what? They never soften up. So it doesn't mean mm -hmm. when you become a head coach, you become a little softer. You become understanding, but still, you feel you put something together to get everybody out there to be their best, not just some guys to be their best. Yeah, B. Mitch with us here on the Hoffman Show. That, that was the one part that really bothered me was the comparison to Del Rio. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, and, and himself, obviously. And it's like, yeah, man, I don't know that your uh, forgiving nature has exactly worked out for you. Uh, I think there's something <laughs> yes. about the rigidity to, because like everyone sees Andy as like this super nice guy. And he is like, he's, a, he's an mm -hmm. all time dude in the NFL, but he's uncompromising. Like he, he yeah. knows what he wants and he's going to get it a certain way and, and you're going to do it that way. And obviously Eric is the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was the disservice to Eric. I I'm curious though, like when you compare the coaches you played for along that, that style. And obviously, as we've talked about now for 10 minutes straight, mm -hmm. like you have the insight into the way Andy did things, which is heavily influenced the way Eric has. Mm -hmm. Like, what is it like in that? Like, I guess the adjustment period, like what is it that those players were experiencing where they're looking around and whether they should have gone to Ron or not, they're going, damn, this is hard. Like, this is different. This is like, what is that adjustment like to get in shape like this and to also learn kind of the volume of plays that Eric is putting on them, the mental load. But the thing about it for me, I think if you're looking at the end result you want, you go through it. I think when he first, hundred percent, he said, he said, we have to get uncomfortable to be comfortable. See, this team has been comfortable, and we're losing. So I've got to take you somewhere you haven't been to get to where you want to go. And I think that's what he's trying to do. And, you know, the other narrative was like, oh, he's yelling, he's getting on players. But I also see him yelling, telling players, great job. That's what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Keep doing that. You know, that doesn't get enough, uh, enough attention as well because, you know, I, if a, I've always let coaches be like this. If you're a quiet person, be quiet. If you're a yeller, yell. But don't go up and down on me. You know, don't wait till the fans come out the media, then you want to yell, and then you very scared and tired and shy the next time. Now, I don't deal with coaches like that. Joe Gibbs, Andy Reid were some of the quietest coaches I've ever dealt with. But you know one thing they expected? They gave you the criteria. They gave you a game plan. And they expected you to take full, like, like ownership of it. They don't want to have to constantly tell you, I need you to do that, I need you to do that. No, you come out here, this is, a, this is professional football. And they both expected when you came on the field, you were prepared, ready to go, and gave your all. I think Eric does it the same way. Joe Gibbs had Ron, um, I mean, uh, Wayne Severe. He also had Richie Pettibone. They yelled and they would curse you out, MF you all day. Andy Reid had John Harbaugh, <laughs> okay? So every coach that's quiet also has a guy on the team that's going to let you know what you need to know. They may not, that's not their personality. But when Andy or, or Joe would say, let's start practice over, we knew they meant business. You know, Eric just don't let you get all the way through a whole practice and uh, or get through 45, 50 minutes. He's going to correct you immediately. And I think I would respect that more. Yeah, no, 100%. And that's the thing is like, you know, we can have all these conversations that are about labeling people as this or that. But like at the end of the day, the standard is the standard. Like you've yeah. got to meet it. And it's about getting on the same page, which I think is ultimately like the good news in this story is at least that's what everyone's saying. They're on the same page publicly. Yeah. I'll tell you that much. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they are behind the scenes. Uh, yeah. Brian Mitchell with us for a few more minutes here on the Hoffman Show getting ready for his preseason debut tonight with Chick and Logan on the TV broadcast. All right, defensively tonight, Brian, mm -hmm. what are you looking for? I mean, obviously all eyes are going to be on Chase, but what, what are you looking for defensively, you know, to see from Chase and obviously beyond uh, Big well, 99? I, just like I, I talked with Jack the other day, and Jack said he wanted to see the guys play fast and play with an understanding that they know what they're doing. That's what I always want to see. I want to see guys be able to go out there and just react. I don't want to see thinking. 
You know, I want to see uh, Emmanuel Forbes get out and show people that stop looking at my size and just look at how, how I played. You know, that young safety tandem, they have a lot of safeties out there that can actually play. I think that's one of the toughest positions they're going to have come down because everybody has something with them. And then ultimately, I want to see how Cody Barton is. I want to see how he and Jamin Davis are playing. We, talk, we talked about linebackers at length last year. We felt that that was a weak link of it. But all of a sudden, we have Chase come back and we got away from it. I want to see the linebackers play with an understanding and with a speed while they're in there. I don't expect to see the starters play very, very long, you know, but I want to see them have an understanding. And that, that goes across all boards, you know. I don't want to see delay of games, okay, on the, on the mm -hmm. offensive side. I don't want to see them coming out of the huddle with five seconds so they got to rush and they may not get all the reads. I want the play to be in there quick. That's on Eric. I want Sam to spit it out. Uh, Jacoby when he gets in. Jake when he gets in. Get to the side. Get to the huddle. Get to the line of scrimmage and go. And on the defense, I need everybody running to the ball. I want to see a turnover. You know, that's something that they said. We got Emmanuel for it because he's a turnover machine, and they have to try to create more turnovers. If we can see them flying to the ball, because when you fly to the football, the ball might pop out. If you're not flying to it, you won't be able to get it. Right. Uh, defensively, I think it's going to be interesting to, to kind of who stays in, who who pops out quick, and in part uh, because they rotate so heavily in yes. the secondary. There has not been a day where the same rotation exists in training camp, at least that I've seen. Mm -hmm. There seems to be a kind of a line of ones across the board, but it also depends on the package. Is there anybody that you think we'll see a little bit more of, maybe like a Quan Martin tonight, where you might see some extended run whether it's in the same spot or different spots as they rotate around. Well, Quan, I think you may see a little bit more of him, and you may see him from different spots. I think they have the belief that this kid could be an outside corner. He can play inside nickel. He can also play some safety. And I think what they do, like you, you're absolutely right, they do so many packages. I can see them trying to use him at the at that, uh, what do they call it, the Buffalo nickel sometimes. You yeah. know, I can see those things. Also, I think they have a, a lot of uh, excitement about the young uh the pass rushers. You know, one mm -hmm. guy I expect to see a lot from is Andre Jones Jr. And I'm so thrilled to see that because another kid from UL Lafayette. So, you know, we got Percy Butler there. We have Farad uh, Gardner there. And also Andre. It's just they're making me happy, you know, being in this league for so long and, you know, not seeing a ton of guys from my school get to places. And now three of them are in camp competing for a job. So, you know, I love that. But Andre, uh, I what I asked Eric and I also asked uh, Jack, do you look at the special team aspect of a player? And both of those coaches to a man say yes. Because if the guy can't play special teams and he's and he's not one of our starters, how the hell is he really going to help us? You know, they want him to be able to play the position, but we need some guys that. And Andre looked six foot four. He can run. He did it down at our UL after. So I'm I want to be really watching him closely tonight because they spoke highly of him. And I, I want to pay more attention to him to see what he does. Two more quick things. Um, I was going to do one, but then you mentioned special or mentioned special teams, and you're you, so I have to ask you about special teams. Like this is the first game we'll see the new kickoff rules, obviously, yeah. uh, and then you know you have the kind of usual preseason special teams alignment. Yeah. What are you um, like? What are you trying to take out of special teams tonight? You know, when when it's fourth down and punt, uh, either punt coverage or punt returns on the field. Like for those of us watching, where should we be looking? Well, I think the return game, you got a lot of little young, a lot of returners out there. Cashmere Allen is another guy. You know, Dax Millen has shown he can catch the ball. He's secure with it. But then I think you need to start looking for a position where you can be explosive at that position. Cashmere Allen, Pringle, you know, those guys can do some things for you. What you're also looking at, the guys that are covering, how fast can they get down there? Can they get off of blocks? You know, those type of things. Uh, guys that are trying to block out to, in this game, I wouldn't fair catch a ball. Okay? I would tell my guys, look, grab it and go for it. Because what you want to do, if you don't get to the 25, it's preseason. Who gives a damn? I need to see my offense run a lot of plays anyway. But if, what if a kid could go break one? I want to be able to see right. that. If guys are out there fair catching in preseason, that would be absolutely ridiculous in my mind. Yeah, no, punt, punt, fine, kick off, just go. Yeah. Uh, and a reminder on punt tonight, uh, we will not see Tress Way, yeah. uh, in case anyone missed it earlier this week. Colby Wadman 
uh, was signed to number punt. Zero. Tress will be the – yeah, oh, oh, punter number zero. <laughs> because why not? It's preseason football, baby. Yeah, Let's go. be good, though, wearing number zero. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's another lefty, too, which I love. It's like, oh, we need a, we need a Tress uh, impersonator. Get us a lefty punter. Um, last thing, you mentioned Jacoby uh, getting the plays out a few minutes ago. How much do you expect to see him tonight? Because he's in a weird spot. Like he's by, mm-hmm. He is a very important to this team as the veteran backup, as the fail-safe in case – either Sam were to get hurt or obviously things go sideways with Sam and he's just not as good as they want him to be. So he's very important. Yeah. But now you got him behind a second string offensive line. How much do you anticipate seeing Jacoby tonight? I think if you see a good drive from Sam with the first team offensive line, Jacoby will get a chance with the first team offensive line and he may wow. get a okay. few snaps with the second team offensive line. But I think they're looking at both of these guys, just like you said, they're very important. They're not looking at him, him, as, at him as a backup. They're looking at him as they are 1A and 1B, and they got to make sure that they protect them because I think the mindset is as long as I have uh, um, uh, Sam in there, I want to have the top linemen, I want to have the top receivers. But we can entertain some of the receivers. Jacoby, you want to give him a chance as well. Jake would probably have to be running for his life later in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sorry, Jake Fromm. It's got to be someone, and turns out it's you. Uh, Brian Mitchell, be on the broadcast tonight, and of course be talking about this all next week with JP, 10-2 to 2 on 106.7 The Fan. B. Mitch, always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Definitely, man. Take care. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.